Welcome to Grace Bible Fellowship. To all of our online friends, join us as we worship Jesus Christ together. Invite your friends. Anybody sign for us? You'd like to sign for us? I could make this, I could do this, but nobody would understand it, would they? <laughs> Mike, can you do anything? Yeah, but they won't understand it. You, you could stand up there and talk. <laughs> Amen. Wow, so glad we're here. I think we're probably already online, and we just trust God to make this time a real time of blessing. I tell you all, I love Jesus. Can you say it with me? I love Jesus, yes I do. I love Jesus, how about you? Amen, I'm glad we do. I'm glad you all love Jesus. What a privilege it is to walk with him, be his child, his glory in his presence. Oh, I love Jesus. I, uh, just wonderful miracles how God's helped us. Uh, we, we lost one of our vans, it was, it, we'd made it our backup van and it decided that it wasn't going to go anymore. Well, you know what the Lord did for us this week? Gave us a real nice van for only $500. Isn't that a miracle? Hallelujah. Yeah, I give the Lord a <laughs> Wow. And uh, our dear friend, Mark Edwards, had helped us with the fork truck years ago. He's helped us several times. In fact, that's the second one that we've got. And I, I want to praise God that he helps us. Yesterday was a good day. Oh, when the Lord brought food extra. Mike, I still think about those two big old pellets I brought at the end and you unloaded. And, I mean, at the first, the beginning. And thank the Lord for his help and mercy. Praise his name. Thank the Lord. Stand with me, would you? Pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all of us said, Amen. How about hallelujah? How about praise the Lord? Amen. Oh, I tell you what, let's sing doxology, okay? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. About go tell it on the mountain. Can you sing that one? Go tell it on the mountain and over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, go, go tell it on the mountain and over the hills and everywhere. Go tell on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's okay. Change that Christmas song to that, isn't it? Amen. Get all excited. Go tell everybody. All right. Get just do. Get all excited. The chorus, Lonnie. Get all. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Everybody go tell. That Jesus Christ is King. Oh, tell everybody, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. 
Well, you talk about people, you talk about things that really aren't important at all. You talk about weather, you talk about problems we have here at home and abroad. Well, I'm telling you. Jesus Christ is still. Do that one again, Lonnie. Number verse number one. Okay. Well, you talk about people. You talk about things that really aren't important at all. You talk about weather. You talk about problems we have here at home and abroad. I'm telling you, excited about it. The world, I'm gonna shout and sing. It's Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get me excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Amen. Let it be long. Come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. We'll praise His name forever. We'll praise His name forever. We'll praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Down at the bottom is living for Jesus, Lonnie. Down at the bottom of the list there, living for Jesus. I hope I got the right one, Laura. Living for, living for Jesus, a life that is true. Striving to please Him in all that. Let it be, I 
owe no other. I owe no other master. My heart shall be thy throne. My life I give it for to live. Oh, Christ for thee alone. Living for Jesus who died in my song on down the list, Lonnie. Jesus saves. You remember that one? Remember Jesus? We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the seas and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command, Jesus saved, Jesus saved. Wafted on the rolling tide, Jesus saved, Jesus saved. Tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saved, Jesus saved. Sing the islands of the sea. Go back, ye ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Trotting above the battle strike, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life, Jesus saves. Jesus saves, singing softly through the gloom, when the heart for mercy craves, oh, sing in triumph upon the tomb, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Now go back up to born again, all right? That goes along with that song, doesn't it, all right? Born again, right up the line, right up the top there. Up just two or three songs. There you go. Born again, there's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again, all because of Calvary. I'm so glad that I've been born again. You may think it's foolish what I'm born to say, but I'm not ashamed. No, I'm not. No, I'm not ashamed. One day I pray, Jesus, take my sin. Oh, thank God he does. And that's when I was born again. Born again, there's really... 
really been a change in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again, and all because of Calvary. I'm so glad that I've been born again. One man came to Jesus, John, and chapter 3. Oh, so afraid. Oh, so afraid. Master, you're from God. I really do. And Jesus said, be born again, born again, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, bless his name, born again, just like Jesus said, born again. I'd like to shake hands one more time. I like it, you shaking hands with each other. I'm glad you love each other. Amen. Amen. I love you, Myrna. Amen. I love you, dear lady. Love you, Pam. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. I love you, baby. I love you. Hallelujah. He's pretty to living God. Honey. Y'all remember this song? Sing with me, all right? Spirit of the, the living God, God fall fresh, fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Be a 
Come up here and lead us in prayer, or pray for us. Amen. <laughs> amen and amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come together and sing praises and just uh, worship you today, Lord. We just ask that everything that's said and done here today would bring glory and honor to you. Yes. And for the ones that aren't here, Lord, for whatever reason, you know it all. So take care of those things. Be with the Walt with his pink eye and and uh, just meet every need that he Amen. has, Lord. Amen. Just watch over us. Take delight in what we're doing and Amen. just be with your servant as he brings the message to us and be with the children's church today, Lord, and help everything that's said and done over there would be pleasing to you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thanks, Mike. Amen. Let's sing uh, uh, Jesus Lover My Soul down there, Lonnie. There you go. <clears throat> Jesus Lover of My Soul Let me to Thy bosom fly While the near thankful I am that we have that kind of shelter. Thanks, everybody. Amen. <clears throat> Today we got a little something special. In fact, we should sing it right now. 
Uh, Emma, stand up back there. Stay right here. Sing with me, y'all. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Hallelujah. You mean she lived with you this long? Yes. How many years? Hundred years. Hundred years, y'all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's the record. Eternity. Thirty-six. Did you say it right? Thirty-six. Yeah, for for eternity. Uh, Emma, come on up, y'all. Sing to us right now. Thank you, Pastor. Yo, man, we're glad you're here to see. We'll have y'all sing right now. Thank you. All right. Amen. I appreciate I appreciate y'all being here today, and I appreciate you putting up with how we try to keep going. One of the things is they're getting ready. I, uh, I really appreciate you singing with me. And I read a statement this week that I thought, it, I believe it fits us, I hope it does anyway. When you start singing that you do it for show, you do it for that, what is gonna sound good, then you've missed it. But if you'll sing worship of the Lord, he loves for us to praise him. What a glorious hope that is, amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. And thank God you are back. We had vacation, family vacation, and that's why you are not here, but we are back, so we had a great time. And when we celebrate our sure you, lady. 34th wedding anniversary, People said you celebrate it once a year, but for us, every day is a celebration. We celebrate Christmas every day, we celebrate Easter every day, we celebrate Pentecost every day, we celebrate our love every day because God is love. And if you, if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about one word, love, the love of God. So today we bring you to Madagascar. You're gonna sing a song in Malagashi language and a, a Christian Malagashi folk song. I wish I so please, uh, maybe you have never seen a song like that, but be patient with us because this is how we sing the love of God and it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We know that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. but he says, if I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a cleansing symbol. Yes, sir. We are singing not to sh show off like pa Pastor remind us, but this is praising God. And we are praying, God, teach us how to love. Amen. The unconditional love. In English, we have only one word, love. But in Greek, we have four different words for love. And we are praying for the unconditional love. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. That's right. So it's reminding us, whatever you do, do it for the Lord. Because if you don't do it for the Lord, at the end, God will say, I didn't know you. And you say, I did this and this and this. But Jesus said, I never knew you. Because if you don't do it with the love of God, not our love, but the love of God, if you marry someone without the love of God, it's nothing. So the love of God will keep us and bind us Thank together you, Lord. until Jesus comes back. So I invite you to renew your love today in the, on the feet of Jesus, whether it is for your husband or wife or your kids or your relatives, your partners, whoever they are. I invite you in the name of Jesus to renew your love and pray with us the unconditional love of God. Amen. Amen. Thank 
Samia fina awana tibi fia na doni fia fana fiti fana nundi rahina nundi rahina vita mje ova ombara shuna diufa. Sing the love of God. Amen. <laughs> oh, thank God for that wonderful love. Praise God. Now, how many kids are going to sing with me? Ah, oh, come on. I got one anyway, all right? Y'all help me keep these kids. Come on. Come on, Judas, sing with me. You, you're a big young man, but I want to tell you, he's a good singer, y'all. You want to come sing with us? Come on, pal. Come on. We won't bite you. Well, I can... What's that? All right, here we go. All right. Louder, I can't hear you. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. How about, do you know that one about I love Jesus? I love Jesus, does he know? Have I ever told him so? Jesus loves to hear me say that I love him every day. Yes, I love Jesus. You can sing that way, can't you? Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. I love to tell him so. The B I B L E. Yes, that the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Hallelujah. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change. I think the truth. Aren't you glad, y'all? Oh, what a change in my life. Now, we got one more. Stop and let me tell you. 
Can you sing that one? Oh, stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Oh, stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. He forgave my sins and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. Oh, stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for. Now that's what we want you to start with, but here's the next one. Oh, go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. Oh, go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. He forgave my sins and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. So go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. And everybody said amen. amen. Will you do it with me? I need you to really help. All right, I'll give the kids a good hand. Thank you, kids. I love you all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I guess you can go to Children's Church. Thank you, Laura. I, 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 Mike won't have to go today. There's only two. I, does anybody want to go to Mike's class? He's, he's still a good teacher. <laughs> amen and amen. Hallelujah. Y'all help me. Help me call on people. Help me get folks coming more and more. I need your help desperately. In fact, that's part of my message today. And if you look in the bulletin, that's the first word, help. <laughs> help. Amen. I need you desperately. Amen and amen. Oh, God's blessings on all. Oh, let's see. Let's receive the offering. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, all right, ushers. We do need to receive that offering. Amen. I'm glad everybody's here that's here. <laughs> I am glad you are here. Hey, let's to the love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win his every child. Aren't you glad? He reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song. Let's, let's sing that one, Lonnie. If we with ink the ocean fill, is that number two? Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on, on earth a quill, and every one of us man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole. Though stretched from the sky to the sky. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and Don't you like that? Isn't that a beautiful verse? 
Oh, to think about God's love, y'all. I just wish he'd grab all of you. <laughs> I want to tell you, he loves you. He loves you dearly. Yesterday, we had a funeral. Um, it was at Wentz. And uh, Boo and I are real good friends. But it was uh, one of the families that used to come here. In fact, uh, a daughter-in-law uh, was Dottie. I don't know, only Larry could remember. Maybe, uh, maybe Cheryl could remember Dottie. Uh, used to we we met in the dining room back in those days when they first came along, and uh, Dottie's mother. I was telling her about it. I, I may have mentioned this to you. We all we I'd ask often, would anybody have a prayer need? Did anybody ask for prayer? And she'd always speak up. She said, "Yeah, be sure and pray for my uncle. He's got old timer's disease." We couldn't help but laugh because I think all of us were getting there, hey? <laughs> we didn't laugh, but anyway, <laughs> I always was amused and I, I was telling her about it. And my, I tell you, look back across the years and I'll tell you all, I'm thankful God has given us the opportunity here at Grace to reach out to so many, many people. I thank God for that. We, I wish we could say everybody's coming, everybody's with us, everybody's here to, and to staying with us, but... Uh, some way or another, I can't keep that going, but I am so thrilled that we have the opportunity. And then we had luncheon at, at, at upstairs. And Janice, I forgot to call you and say, would you come and help me? So I was the, the cook and the chief bottle washer and the scrubber of the tables. So I tell you what I did, I stood up and said, would y'all help me at the dinner? I said, would y'all help me put the chairs away and and they said, yeah, we'll run the vacuum, and they cleaned it up for me. So I praise the Lord for that. It was, uh, the guy's name was Ed, Ed Bowers. I don't know if any of you would, might have known Ed. Ed Bowers, his wife was Norma. And uh, she came in my, I'd already gone into the, my little office, and she came in and talking about those, those years. I want to tell you all, I thank God that he's helped us keep going through many a hard place and difficult times. And, and on Sunday night, we have so many folks come to church, we almost fill the place running over, don't we? Well, if we have eight, we're thankful. If we have 25, we're real thankful. But anyway, I'm glad that God helps us to keep going. And by His grace and His help, I refuse to stop. And all of us said, Amen. 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 I just said, Lord, help me. I... Uh, the other day, I, I was mentioning something about I refused to stop, and my son Danny said, yeah, Daddy, I'll keep going till I enter in. He started singing a song to me. <laughs> oh, I want to make it to that city. And uh, on the overhead this morning, I was uh, talking about that, giving some thoughts about that wonderful city. Y'all, I got to make it home. I got to get in there. And that means I'm going to live for Jesus. And so there's three things you remember I talked to you about. Number one, I want you to go to heaven when you die. And I don't, you don't need to go right now. Stay with us as long as you can, okay? All right, stay with us as long as you can. Number two, I really want you to live for Jesus enjoying the trip. And I, I, I've been thinking about that lately. You know, I, I, really, I really do want you to go to heaven. But dear ones, I want you to enjoy walking with Jesus. It's the greatest thing in the world to be just sold out to him and walk with him. Wow, I wish I could get all of you to catch that. It is such a thrilling thing to just be sold out to Jesus Christ. Amen. Matt Batterson wrote a book I've mentioned to you several times. He, he, in the name of it's All In. Well, when I grew up, we always said all out. Is there any difference? The best I can figure out, I can't see any difference. I'm all in for Christ and all out for Christ. So... <laughs> Oh, and I tell y'all, it is a privilege to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Born again, there's really been a change in me. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I wish I could get that across. I really do. I, I hunger for it. I, I wish I would better at that. And then that third one, I want you to fulfill the plan God has for the rest of your life. Wow. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I had the privilege of having that funeral of people that were here a long time ago. I, I, I'm glad I had that opportunity. 
And uh, I just trust God to help us keep doing that for his name's sake and glory and his honor. And I want to thank you for standing there with me. We never charge for funerals and weddings. Some people give donations every once in a while, but we're doing this for the glory and the honor of the Lord. We, we love to do it. And I thank you for doing that with me. Yeah? Uh, you know, with the biker church and with the Congolese people. I, I really appreciate y'all doing that. Well, it takes a wear and tear on everything, and, and uh, we may have to do some redoing, uh, but look what the Lord's done already. How many times he's helped us. Wow, praise his name forever. <laughs> Bless his name forever. I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bibles and like to turn with me to the 14th chapter of John, it's where I'm going to begin. I'm not going to really measure on anything out of this 14th chapter because there's four little points I want to give to you today. I want to talk to you about Jesus Christ. Do you know what the word incarnation means? Anybody remember what that word means, incarnation? You remember incarnation? Anybody remember that? Norman, do you remember what incarnation means? You're old enough to remember that, aren't you? Yeah? Mike, do you know what incarnation means? Now, if you don't, we're going to have to really do some teaching to you, Mike. <laughs> you know what the incarnation is? Jesus, the Son of God came in flesh and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. I love that. But the 14th chapter, Jesus said, I'm going to read from the old King James, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions if it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. <laughs> and dear old Thomas, somebody's called him Doubting Thomas, maybe that was it, but I, I wonder if Thomas wasn't one that just, he really wanted to understand better. He wanted to know, you know. Is that, and he said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And y'all, these next words, either Jesus was a, a raging maniac, or this is the great truth that all of us need to get a hold of. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Y'all, <laughs> I remember hearing one of the apologists in a debate with some of the, uh, of the people. He said, you know, you're going to say that my, my way, but he said, we just need to understand it. This is the way we believe it, that our way is Jesus Christ and that there's no other way. And y'all, that's the truth. No other religion, no other philosophy, no other way of going down that road, and that burns a lot of folks up. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Oh, I like that. And if you've known me, you would have known my Father also. And henceforth you know him and have seen him. <laughs> and Philip, and Philip must have been a little questioner too, for he said, Lord, show us the Father and it's sufficient. That's what we like, Lord. And Jesus said, Philip, have I been so long time with you and yet you don't know me? Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest then, show us the Father? Believe you not don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me, in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. And you remember in the 20th chapter of John, he said, all of this was written 
I've told you all of these stories. I've showed you what Jesus did. I've told you about all of this. And there's a whole bunch we didn't tell you about. We wanted to, but we don't have time. Or your place, please. But he said, I've, I've told it to you so that you may believe. And that's what God's after. That we will really believe him and lean on him. I saw a sign this week said uh, maybe the reason why we don't pray as we should is we just don't believe God like we should. Wow, that's kind of powerful, isn't it? Lord, help us, help us to believe. I tell you, there's been times in praying when I bumped up against it, said, Lord, I, I'm really there. And you remember when Jesus and the disciples, three disciples came off the Mount of Transfiguration and came down and the disciples were there with the crowd and there was a, quite a, something going on and Jesus said, what's going on? And, they, and the guy spoke up and said, I brought my son to your disciples and, and, and there was, <laughs> they, they couldn't touch him. And, Jesus, and he said, Lord, if you can, would you touch my son? And Jesus said, if. If, <laughs> it's not a matter of if. And the guy said, oh, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. And dear Lord, help us that we'll believe. That's what God's after, is that we may believe his promises. I, one of the promises Mike and I have been praying to the Lord about as we try to reach out to so many of these people is, Lord, you promised Supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And folks, the Lord done it many times and helped us out. I, I thank God for that. I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed at it and how the Lord's helped many other folks to help us. Yesterday, I just have to tell you some of these little things. And you say, well, that's just, I want to tell you, folks, we're in this to build God's kingdom. That's the only reason why we're here doing what we're doing. Your kingdom come, your will be done in us just like it is in heaven. Amen? So that's what we're after. And yesterday I got a call. Well, it was Saturday. I got a, a Friday I got a call from Hal. He uh, operates that Blossom Farm operation way up on North Brady and 53rd. I want to tell you all, if you want to see some beautiful flowers, wow, wow, I don't know where he gets them. I don't know where he gets the money. I mean, there are literally thousands of beautiful flowers. But he also has some food. And so he called me and said, I'll see you in the morning. Uh, and so I went up with my truck because he thought I wouldn't, wouldn't be too big a load, but I had such a load it was sticking off over the tailgate. He brought two huge Gaylord boxes. He calls them bins, you know, those big old boxes about that big, about that tall, full of watermelon and cantaloupe and beans and beets and squash. And I don't know what all we had on top of there. Look, look what God did. I, Man, we were up against it for yesterday. <laughs> I'd gone to get a load of food, and before you know it, it's all gone. People are begging for food right now. It's, 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 work, it's going there, y'all. Just think about it, how the prices where they're going is just unbelievable. So folks are just, and I've had a lot of folks cross here said, y'all, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be alive. There's one lady who has a, a daughter. I don't know, she must get me 20, and it just, she can't operate correctly. But she can walk around with it. She always smiles to me, wants to tell me thanks. And she said, I want to tell you, Pastor, if y'all weren't here, we wouldn't be alive. So y'all, I thank God for every opportunity he has. And I thank God for what he's doing to help us keep going. I praise him for that. Uh, in fact, uh, some lady got it on her heart to get blinds for us upstairs. So we got that done. And then I, we were talking about those blinds last Saturday, you remember? A guy called me and he said, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll buy four of them for you right there. So, so uh, we'll do something about getting some pretty more blinds up there to do those things so that when it's over with and we are through singing, we can turn the blinds and y'all still see those beautiful stained glass windows. I, I really thank God for that too, y'all. That was just a miracle. When we got in here, those, that, that thermal pane windows right there, and... Uh, well, they, they were clear, you know, you couldn't see out of them. So we decided to buy some crinkle glass, which is like a stained glass thing you'd stick to the window. And I did it once in a church in Grand Junction. And so we're going, and, and old Dick Russell says, oh, no, let's don't do that, Donnie. Let's, let's, let's put stained glass windows. I said, hoo, 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 
where are we going to get the money? He said, we'll make them. And y'all, that's what happened. Dear old Grandpa Johnson and I, he taught us how to do it. Now, he designed all of those circles through there, fixed those all up, and taught us how to do it. But it's not really hard. You just have to take some time, and you've got to stay at it. But look at those beautiful windows. Now, what am I talking about? Look what God provides. Look how God helps us. God sees us through. A guy came by one day, and he said, Hey, listen, we've got a piece of property we want to give you. I said, hoo, hoo, hoo. And I took, he took me off down into West Rock Island, and, well, I wouldn't exactly say something that I was anxious for. In fact, Grandpa John said, Oh, man, that's going to be work. Well, the only work was we had to clean it up, and we sold it. It took some money to get, get it clean and up down. But we had about $18,000 left. And you see those seats you're sitting on right there? That bought those chairs. That bought that red carpet right there and put it up down through here. And then we we give it some money. Look, look what God does. I want to tell you all, God's been mighty good to us at Grace. Now, we may have to dig in and do some more because the stuff starts to wear out. But, oh, I'm so thankful that I have this privilege of believing God. Do you believe him? I do. Are you been up against it like me every once in a while? Help thou my unbelief? Amen. I have. He said, believe me. Believe me for the work's sake. Believe me. I have come. Now, y'all, in the bulletin on the front page, it talks about tell the gospel. Go tell the good gospel. And it said the gospel is the, how's it, how's it there? Have I got it? The crucifixion, it's on the front page of the bulletin, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the coming again. Hallelujah, I'm looking for him. What if it happened right now? Would you go to heaven with us? <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed assurance for that, y'all. That's wonderful. Glory to God. But when I got to thinking about that, I couldn't find one that I wanted to put on there, but I put that one, I put in front of it, the incarnation. Jesus was born in the flesh. And y'all, if he hadn't have come, amen. It's just like this. We thank God for Easter because that proof, that's great proof of the, that God's word is true. But if there hadn't have been a Christmas, there wouldn't be an Easter, right? If there hadn't have been a living Jesus, there wouldn't be a crucifixion a resurrection, and a coming again. But he came, and he lived among us. You know, that first chapter of John, I thought you just, Lonnie, I wish we had that up there. Everybody could do it. Oh, and the word, that's talking about Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. Oh, and I'd like to skip over that 14th verse, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I love it, y'all. He dwelt among us. And the thing that thrills me is though he's not physically here, he sent his spirit and he walks with us and he talks with us and he tells us that we're his. What a privilege it is to walk with Jesus Christ because he became flesh. Amen. So let me go down a list of stuff that I put down here. He became a baby. <laughs> Y'all, God got into a lady's womb. What he designed, what he planned, what he did. And it was born of a virgin. Her name was Mary. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Let's see, I was thinking about the other day when a baby is born, do they always spank a baby's bottom to get them crying? Do they always do that? I, I don't know. I, I haven't been around enough when they were born, when they, you know, but I remember you'd, you'd pat on their bottom and try to get them to cry or something, get, you know, sound coming out. If that's the case, do you think Jesus got patted on the bottom when he got born? Can you catch that, what I'm trying to say to you? He was a baby. He was born as a baby. But he also lived in his mother's womb. God, God came 
in his flesh. Y'all, can, can you see that? He knows what you're going through. It says in his word, he was tempted in all points like you and I are, yet without sin. He was there walking with, he knows our feelings, he knows what happens to us. Did he have a headache? Well, Scripture seemed to think it does. Amen. Let's go on. He was born as a baby. He grew up as a child. Remember that 12-year-old? He stayed at the temple. <laughs> Parents went back and said, and he said, don't you know, I must be about my father's business. And it was too young. I said, said no, you got to come home. But he obeyed his parents. He honored his father and his mother. Come on now, y'all. I'm talking about God who was crucified, risen, and coming again. I'm talking about God honored his mother and dad. Now, Joseph was his stepdad. That's true. But he honored them. And he lived among them. He was willing to humble himself somewhere around the age of 30. Now, I know all of those years he, he worked, they say as a carpenter. The other day I was reading, uh, what's the name of that lady, Kathy Gifford, something like is that her name? She said she was there in Jerusalem, and one of the guys said, no, he couldn't be a carpenter because there wasn't enough woodwork to do. He was a stonemason. I don't know what he was, but I want to tell you, he worked. He was right there. With whoever his dad was, he did it. He honored his mother and dad. Amen? I like that. He humbled himself in obedience to them, but he humbled himself at the beginning of his ministry, and he was baptized by old John. I, I can see he, John already had God lived. There's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. How did he say that? God revealed it to him. Y'all, God likes to reveal truth to you. He always reveals his worth. He'll never be out of his word, y'all. You don't go down that road thing, that prophecy. If it's not the book, y'all, it's not God. Okay, it's just not good. He doesn't contradict himself. Anyway, John saw him coming, and, and Jesus said, I want to be baptized. And John said, oh, man, I'm not worthy. I'm not even worthy to tie your sandals. I, I'm not worthy. And Jesus said, yeah, but let's let Scripture be true. Now, the Bible says he, went, he came up out of the water, so that probably means he was immersed. I, I don't know, did they sprinkle and pour back then? I don't know, but I want to tell you, in some places there ain't enough water to, spring, to baptize them by immersion, okay? I, um, and Lord willing, next Sunday we'll, we'll baptize. I'd planned to today, but my dear guy got sick. And Sean was, has been sick. In fact, pray for Sean. But anyway, he was baptized. But the next point, that's the third chapter, the fourth chapter in Matthew says he was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights. Y'all, I don't think any of us have been that road of temptation. Now, I'd have to tell you, I've been down the road of temptation a lot, and I thought, Mike, I thought when you get this age, it, you know, you've gone over some of those kind of things. You got past it. I want to tell you, sometimes it comes swinging in so stronger than it probably ever did in my life. But you know what? His grace is still sufficient. Hallelujah. And that's what happened with him. Remember how he was able to refute the devil by the word of God? I remember when I was young, I'd pray, Oh, Lord, I plead the blood. Please help me. Deliver me, Lord. And finally, one day, I read in the scripture where Jesus overcame the devil. How? By the word of God. And I found it's true. Whatever you're up against, Oh, my Lord, keep us pure. Keep us clean. Let your love flow through us, Lord. Help us to live to glorify your name. Amen. I want to tell you, it's out there, but he saw the way through so that you and I can too. He lived among us. All right? He never exalted himself. In fact, the scripture is very clear that he was willing to lay all of his God-given ability aside that he might bring glory to his Father in whatever he did. <laughs> he roughed it. He lived with his fellow men. He was hungry. 
he was tired. Can you all catch this one? He was homeless. Have you ever thought of that? I want to tell you all, homelessness in America is a major, major problem. And the government, instead of helping us, is jamming us full of rules and regulations. I'm talking about all lines of government. Jamming us full until... <laughs> Y'all, you ought to see some of the things they could do to me because I reach out to homeless people. Will they throw you in jail? Blabble well, too. <laughs> we'll keep doing for Jesus. He was homeless. And yet, all up and down the streets, he preached the kingdom of God. And, and y'all, I, I don't know if you can catch this or not. This was before the cross. This was before the crucifixion. He forgave sins. You say, yeah, but I thought it was all the cross. I want to tell you, God is the answer for all of living in every situation. And when he's present, he can forgive your sins. Hallelujah. Remember? Remember the little guy that was uh, on the mat and they couldn't get him to Jesus, so they tore open the roof and let him down before the Lord. And what did the Lord say to him? Son, your sins are forgiven you. And boy, that upset the Pharisees and the scribes and the, I guess if any Sadducees there, they got, got all upset. But he said that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Think of it, y'all. Think about it. The incarnation of Christ brought the power of God among us. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he exposed sin at the cost of rejection and hate. He loved even those who were hateful and mean. He saw people as they were. He saw sheep, them as sheep without a shepherd. And yet, he lived among us. He put up with jealousy and littleness of his own followers. Isn't that the truth? Think about it. There they were in the last times. And the guys were in an argument who was, the, who was the best among them. What human beings we are. Wow. For, well, <laughs> he put up with the jealousy and littleness of his followers. He kept loving, and he kept telling us, love one another. And I say it again, he forgave sins. He revealed God. He revealed to us who God really is. If you want to see God, take a look at Jesus. And I've, I've said that for years, then all of a sudden it jumped out to me. That's exactly what I read to you in the 14th chapter of, of John. He said, have I been so long time with you? <laughs> you don't know the Father? So you see, Jesus is God among us. Not only 100% human, he was willing to lay aside the godliness that he might be all human, but he was still 100% God. How do we know? Wow, he rose from the grave. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said that God is love. Can you say it with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, could you say it with me and put your name for God when there's world? Could you do that? For God so loved... Could you do it, John? Mike? You think you'd do that? All right, let's try it, okay? For God so loved... Donnie Plymouth, That God gave his only Son that if... Donnie Plymouth, come on, you're saying your name, believes in him, 
Donnie Plemons should not perish, but Donnie Plemons should have everlasting life. Did you put your name in there? Did you make it, Betty? Yeah, Pascal, you sit right there, my kid. He'd say, I never can say Pascal. I'll always say Donnie Plemons because you hear my voice. <laughs> Y'all, he loves you. He knows your name. He became flesh and he dwelt among us. Why did God do that? Why? Why was he willing? Y'all, when you get to thinking about what he put up with in this earth, I, 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 I know we're going to the crucifixion. I know that, but there was. Think about it. Rejection. Hate. Everywhere he went, they were trying to find something they could find fault with him. How would you like that? And you're, I, I, thank you all for not finding too many faults with me. I appreciate it. I'm glad you look beyond my faults. I appreciate it. But you think about Jesus. Y'all, now come on. He was a human being. And they criticized him and condemned him. And the and, and Bible says they were looking for ways to kill him. It says that in the scripture. Not very long after he started his ministry, they're talking about trying to kill him. And yet, he still walked among us. Wow. What a mighty God we have. Y'all think about it. No matter where you've been, no matter what's gone on in your life, amen. Mark and I yesterday were trying to find a place that my friend Jim called and his brother Max in trouble. And, uh, and we couldn't find a place. We was looking and, and so uh, Mark called a friend of his. He said, now Donnie, I want to ask you something. Is Max a guy that's got a record? Well, I really don't know whether Max does. I don't think he does, but he's got a problem. He, he keeps tipping that, you know, and, and that's why he's we're in strain again, bad. And Mark said, well, this guy that rents to people, he just can't rent to people that got a record. Have you got a record? I have one, and my name's written there. <laughs> in the Lamb book of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean to keep that record. Amen. Keep it clear with the Lord. I don't know where you're from, what your situation is. You know what? I really don't need to know your past, but I do know that no matter what it is, He loves to forgive and He loves to bring redemption. He's the God that walks among us. I love that, don't you? I love it. And, you know, he's, and, and, and don't let yourself be confused when talk about, we talk about the Holy Spirit's here. Folks, when you're talking about the Holy Spirit, you're talking about Jesus because he's the one that's sinning. The Father said that he, it was his Son. He said the Spirit, so the Father and the Son and the Spirit are one. I, uh, I read the, heard the other day, Augustine said, if you try to figure out the Trinity, you'll go crazy. But if you don't believe the Trinity, you won't go to heaven because it was the Father, Son, and Spirit together that gets us home to heaven. So don't, don't, be, don't be trying to figure it all out. When we talk about Father, Son, and Spirit here, we're not, it, it, he's God, okay? It's just God. You say, how could it be? He's God. I think I told you that the time I heard Billy Graham years ago in an interview with somebody on BBC. And uh, the guy was asking him a question, and I, I don't know what all it was, I can't remember. But Billy Graham says, well, he's God. I figure he can probably do what he'd like to. Do you believe that? I do with all my heart. He's God. You can trust him. And one of the greatest evidences, y'all, the, one of the greatest is that he walked among us. He was right here in the flesh. I mean, he knows what you're going through. He knows your heartache. He knows your disappointment. He knows when somebody's just said things to you that were mean or when they said things you didn't understand. He knows that when you may have mis misconception of what it was. He knows when your perceptions are bad. 
but he still reaches out to you. Amen. I've told you about the time my David said, Daddy, perception's everything. I said, mm. Well, he said, it's everything the person has. And I said, mm. Truth is everything. And Jesus said, I am what? The way, the truth. So it's him that we can center on and read about what he's done as he walked the roads of life. And it was here to take on that human form that he might be able to transform us into servants of the living God. And get us out of the sin business. I, I love singing that little song with the kid, Jesus on the inside. Oh, aren't you glad? Works on the outside. Hallelujah. I want to tell y'all, he's still working on me. <laughs> oh, boy, I told you a while ago, I, I thought maybe some of those temptations I'd get farther up the road on, y'all. But I want to tell you, he's still working on me. Amen. And he wants to. He wants to help you be a blessing in life. Amen. But he wants to help you enjoy living for him. So that was the second point I was trying to get to you this morning, get to heaven, but I want you to enjoy. For that's his promise. He said, I leave my peace with you, not as the world gives, for I don't take it away. I'm here to produce. I'm here to give you what you need. And folks, I want to tell you, there's times you can cry, Lord, peace. I need it. I need it, Lord. I need your help. We're in a situation that's chaotic. It's, oh, we, they're confusing. We don't know which way to turn. But peace. Honest, folks, I've walked through many hard places. It's peace. Peace, peace. But not only does he want to give you peace, he wants to give you joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. In the, I love that. Hallelujah. Man, there's times with tears hit my eyes. I'm facing up with somebody weeping and praying over. And yet, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something else he loves to do. He loves to fill you with love until it transforms everything about you in this life. His love flowing in your heart will change your perception of life Amen. You'll begin to see. I, uh, yesterday I, I called Becky and said, honey, write this down. One of the biggest things that happens in our lives is we look at life from ourselves. We, we put ourselves as the leader, as the one. Remember I told you the other day, I think it was last Sunday, I told you there are two types of people. Who was it said that? I think Cliff Sanders said two types of people. Those who say, I can do it, you know, we'll handle this. And then there's the other crowd. What do they say? Help! Hey, y'all, that's what I, in the first thing in the bulletin today, help! I need y'all to help me get folks in. We try to reach out. We try to touch them. And we do touch a lot of people. But I need you to help. I need you to tell the good stuff that goes on. Tell the good stuff. Oh, don't tell the bad stuff. Everybody's used to that. If you want to hear bad stuff, turn on the news. I don't listen to news anymore. And, and, and wait a minute, I don't, that doesn't make me righteous. I just don't listen because 35 years ago when I last listened, I turned on the news yesterday and it's the same story, just different names. Bad news. Bad news. Yeah, and it's wonderful, wonderful that God can help. We, we can get beyond all of this in life and see a God. It's there to fill us with love. And I love that. I love life. I love looking at Jesus like he does look at life. I try my best to. But I like this. Jesus saw them as sheep without a shepherd. And that's why I try to sing real often. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. And God wants you and me to do that in our relationship with each other and with life. Have to. Because I have to tell you, there's times that, I, boy, my best is just not good enough. But that's where the Lord steps in. It's not me being good, it's Him intervening. He's the God to help us. Lord, got to have you. Got to have you, Lord. Oh, God help us. I, uh, I've been trying to walk again. 
uh, real, real faithful. When we was at David's last week, he's got a nice pool out in the back. And he, when he was changing homes this last time, he said, Dad, I'm, I'm not going to get a pool. But he did, okay, and there's a pool out there. Nice one. So I decided, well, I'd get out there and swim. And, man, I learned to swim in high school, maybe somewhere along in there early. And I, uh, Australian crawl, you know, you do like that. That's the one I'd always specialized in. You know what? I tried to do that, and I couldn't do it. My legs wouldn't whip. I've been riding a... I've been riding a fork truck too much, Mike, and sitting in my office praying with people trying to help. So I decided, boy, I'm going to go after it. So there's a good place right here. Ten times around is a half mile, okay? And I figured that out, okay? So 20 times around is a mile, so I at least try to get a mile in, okay? But I want to tell you, it's not the mile that I'm after, his presence. I want him to come. I want him to touch your hearts. I want him to break in upon you in a marvelous way till you enjoy walking with him. You tell others, hey, I love this thing of God. I love what God's doing. I need you to help, y'all. I need you to help me. Spread the good news. Tell your laborers. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell folks around you. Amen. I love to walk with Jesus. I love to to follow him I love to do his will well I'll see what next Sunday it forwards but I, I, I three other things are in that message not only did he live among us he was crucified but I, I <laughs> S.M. Lockridge says I, I like to tell about it but he said I like to rush on I like to tell you that he's living he rose again, and that's the proof. But I want to tell you, he didn't stop there. Remember we do communion around here? Remember that? And what do we do? As oft as you do this, what? Do it in remembrance of me, what? Until I come. He's coming. Are you ready? What if it happened now? What if all of a sudden? Wow. Well, I'm ready for it to happen. I tell you, it seems like our world is in a horrible mess right now. But I don't know. I want to tell you a little secret I found out. He walked among us when it was terrible. In fact, I heard Chuck Swindoll say that when Jesus was here on earth, that was probably one of the worst centuries that ever happened in the history of the world. Crucifixion was common. Life was worthless, folks. We don't crucify, but we kill each other. And if they don't kill you, they steal from you. And if they don't steal from you, they lie to you. If they don't lie to you, they live immoral. And you suffer when you're immoral. So we're in a suffering world right now. I don't know. Whether it's as bad as the first century, I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, it seems like it is in America. You think what's happened in the last eight, ten years, it's just overwhelming. Wow. Life is worthless. Oh. But we serve a God to see us through. He walks among us. Do you know him? He said, come, I'll change you. I'll make you different. Come to him, dear ones. He's inviting you with all of your heart. God doesn't put up with halfway. It's either all or it's not. Amen? It's either Jesus or it's not. He's the way, the truth, and the life, or he's not. I love him, don't you? Say it with me. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. How about you? Amen. Where are you? In your relationship with God. Praise his name. Dear Lord, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for the opportunity to preach this crowd as I put up there on the overhead this morning. It's not some sweet strategy that you designed, but Lord, it's what you want. 
the preaching of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you called me to be a preacher. I, whew, I looked back and thought, my, I sure wish you'd have, whew, need somebody else. But, Lord, the scripture says through the foolishness of preaching, you call people to repentance. So, Lord, we plead those that aren't right with you that today they would turn and believe you and repent of their sins. For, Lord, we discovered that in faith you give us what we need that we might repent and that we might turn and be changed for it's you, Lord. So we trust you in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Everybody said amen. 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 Well, if we were eating upstairs, I'd invite you up there, but we're not, so I guess you'll have to do something else, okay? Wish I had money, I'd take all of you out to eat. I love all of you. And I ask you, please help me. Please help me this week to get folks in. Let's get children. Let's find folks. Help me out, y'all. We need it. We need it desperately. Man, I'm glad you're here. Let's see. Uh, uh, Tia, who's that guy with you? Good to see you, Brian. That precious one there beside you, Tia. I'm glad y'all are here. I'm, I could just go down the line and tell you, every one of you I love you. And folks, I think you know I mean that. <laughs> All of my heart. And I don't know any doubt about it in my soul. I love and appreciate you. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. God's blessings on you. Amen. Next Sunday's potluck. I appreciate y'all bringing such good food that you do. God's blessings on you.